বাংলার মাটি আমি বিহির ক্লেনে আইলা সকাল সন্ধ্যা কাহাম করিয়া কেহি সুকামে পাইলা সকাল সন্ধ্যা কাহাম করিয়া কেহি সুকামে পাইলা ঘরণি মোর ঘরে থাকে কণ্ঠ পানে চাইয়া আমার উদাস ভাই রে মায়ের চিঠি পাইয়া ঘরণি মোর ঘরে থাকে কণ্ঠ পানে চাইয়া আমার উদাস ভাই রে মায়ের চিঠি পাইয়া স্বদেশ মাটি ছাইরায় আমি পহরবাসী হইলা সকাল সন্ধ্যা কাহাম করিয়া কেহি সুকামে পাইলা সকাল সন্ধ্যা কাহাম করিয়া কেহি সুকামে পাইলা বিগ লেন ইজ এ ভেরি popular place it's a heartland of bangladesh bangladeshi people a lot of people started their lives in this country from around brick lane uh, later on they got sort of jobs they got good works they established themselves that moved away from brick lane but brick lane is a really very uh, popular place very touchy place so this this song just reminds people it really touches people it's very practical messages of the bangladeshi people it also said we have been working in the restaurant uh, in the factories uh, uh, but what what have, have we got we are not very happy we are facing a lot of problems uh, in everyday life so is it re- was is, was it really worth coming here just just a question question asking themselves i know no one can give the answer but this is a time to ask স্বদেশ মাটি ছাইরায় আমি পহরবাসী হইলা সকাল সন্ধ্যা কাহাম করিয়া কেহি সুকামে পাইলা সকাল সন্ধ্যা কাহাম করিয়া কেহি সুকামে পাইলা জিগায়হামি দেশ ছাড়িয়া পহরবাসী হইলা সকাল সন্ধ্যা কাহাম করিয়া কেহি সুকামে পাইলা আমরা যেসব মানুষ সব আইতে আছে সে ওকে দড়ি দড়ি আনে এই গুয়ারো ব্রিটিশ তো আমি তো গেছি আমি তো যাইতে যাদের গেছি যাদের নলিঠলি হয়েছে তখন আমি যাদের আইছি আর আমার বাই আর একজন আনছি ক্যালকাটা ক্যালকাটা আনিয়ে আমি আইছি আইয়া আমি এইখানে উঠে গেছি আমি যে সময় জাহাজ লই আইলাম কাঠি বাইছি আমার ফ্রেন্ডটি আমার ওখানে তুলছে আর আমার লন্ডন লইয়া আইছে হাই কমিশনার দিয়ে আমার ফুরু বকল দিছে তখনে আমি এখানে কয়েকদিন থাকিয়া কাবেন্ট্রি গেছি ফ্যাক্টরিত সাজ করছি ডনলাপ ফ্যাক্টরিত সাজ করছি করিয়া এখান থাকি আমার চাইছিল আর্মি যেহেতু আমি আমিত না গিয়া অন্য তারা কেস মেস করিয়া আমি কইছি ওলা নাই হলা তারা কইছে না যাইতে হইব ব্রিটিশ পেলা গো আমি কইছি এগ্রি হয়েছি না তখন তারা কইছে তোমার দে লইব হইতে হইব হইতে হইব ছয় সপ্তাহ টাইম দিছে তারা ছয় সপ্তাহ মাঝে এটা তোমার মাইন্ড করো তুমি উঠে যাও আনে জেলো তাক পাই তাইলে ওলা কাম করবাই বলে একশো লিঙ্ক করে ফাইবাই তখনই আমি ছয় সপ্তাহে মাইন্ড ঠিক করছি যে আমি যে সিট আসলাম আমি আমার সিট গেইম Well, I think the important thing to understand is that this community isn't here by accident. This community is here because of a historical process which was the 
the long involvement of, of Bangladeshi people as, as seamen, as merchant seamen, particularly their contribution during the, the Second World War when so many people were killed and, and so on, and that the settlement here was as, as a direct result of that and uh, the presence of, of such, you know, a very significant Bangladeshi community now is exactly because of that, because of those few people who came, more people came and more people, and exactly as the followers. It's a mathematical process. People bring more people. And, uh, and I think that's really important, and to know that, that um, the, reason f the reason for this is, is because of that, that, that whatever, whatever Britain did in India actually has, has come home here, and that it's, it's not a remote thing, that, you know, it's, it's this old truism, we are, you know, we are here because they were there, and, and that that's actually true of the Bangladeshi community in a very demonstrable way. Could you action they claim up? মানুষ <laughs> <laughs> রিলিজিয়ন হিসাবে কোনো কাগজপত্র করছি না ম্যারেজ করছে পরে গালি তুলে দেয় গেছে কি কিছু and you have left you know bangladesh or silhet or yeah. you know how do you feel about that i like to sunet the fasebul my last boy 9 year old and those children not going to home want to live there might be few year if i'm life another few year i'm there and i 
wanted to go back to my place. What happened during the war was that, that more and more people, just having served on the ships, decided to leave the ship because it was, for one thing, because it was a very scary and unpleasant process. About six, seven thousand Indian seamen were killed in the Second World War. Um, you won't find that on the uh, memorial at Tower Hill. You'll find a good scattering of, of Indian and uh, Bangladeshi names, but you won't find anything like 6,000. And that's because they were recruited under Indian articles and recruited by the Serang, so they weren't actually part of the official crew. Some people came over here by sea, then when after one or two years, then again go back by sea with uh, all the cloth, British made cloth, cigarette, especially. <laughs> and when they went uh, to the villages, all the people from the villages surrounded him and uh, he offered cigarette to everybody. And uh, when uh, there was this uh, smell, <laughs> I, uh, everybody was interested with the smell. And uh, so everybody is, uh, everybody is wants to come over here to see. First time when I, when I was working in the restaurant, I feel uh, that uh, at that time, as I, I never f uh, do physical work. And uh, here I have to do, as I'm a waiter, I have to do, but uh, I accept it. And uh, because I came over here to earn money for the whole family. And after uh, two, three months, my uncle says, uh, he is going, uh, he started a business, restaurant business. And he asked me to take charge of the travel agency business. He was running at that time. This area is for the poor people, but uh, I like it. I like it to live as I lived before, because I have no ambition to become a big man and live in a big house, because I believe in simple life. And because now more facilities in Brickley, you can get anything. All Bangladeshis, Indian, Pakistani foods are here. So, uh, no problem. Everybody, if you could accommodate them, all will come to Brooklyn to live. Because of the mosque, because of the place, the center, welfare, 39 Fordner Street is the center for the whole community. And Brooklyn Mosque is the religious center, not only religious, cultural center.
you will find in course of your ta uh, going around that that most probably tells you the whole story of the whole area, 300 years. Persecuted Christians came from Europe. They, they were Huguenots. They came to this area, settled down. They bought the place as a place of worship. Then they prospered and they moved out. Then came, there was potato famine in Ireland. So Irish people came over here. They bought the property, converted into Catholic church. Irish people, most likely most of them went to America and Canada. Therefore, again it began. So the, in the meantime, 1930s came and Jews were persecuted. Jews came from Europe, came here, bought the place, converted into a synagogue. Now the, then the Jews prospered, moved out, and then the, it was again a, a new generation of Punjabis and Bengalis came. So they bought the property and they converted into a mosque. So the, the mosque is the story of 300 years of this area. When we first came to this area, we could really count, you know, more than 300 to 500 Bengali-speaking Pakistanis, in East Pakistanis. Now, of course, it is one of these areas where I think Bengali-speaking uh, Bangladeshis will number about anything between 40 to 50,000. So there is a tremendous growth of population along with that new features have come in. Now, when we are now dealing with million pounds of in, uh, enterprises, well, we just look back that 35 years ago, there is no question of these type of activities. Our welfare activities more or less were limited to filling forms and processing applications, etc., etc. In sociocultural field, well, one of the things that we had to do, because that to meet the basic needs of human life, is that we had to, from our friends came letters, I mean local, contact letters, English letters, they had, we had to write their letters in English, and some of their letters were love letters as well, because that was a basic need of, I mean, of life. But they couldn't read, they couldn't write, so we as a wa welfare workers had to read their love letters and write their love letters on their behalf. So this is the start, starting point. Now, of course, that phase is over. <laughs> we are now deal, to deal with multi-million pound developers, billion pound developers, and the government institutions. Sixty-nine, at that time, uh, Thosir Ali was killed at Bromley. Wow. When he was coming back from the restaurant uh, to his flat by skinhead, and uh, he was died on the spot in, in his doorstep. Next morning, we went there with my colleague, and uh, I find the blood, pool of blood in the doorstep, and I show in my finger to the reporter of Times that this is happening and every people are got a panic how they went out. And uh, it was published in the Times. And uh, with these sources, I think, because uh, these people who killed him, there is a, I thought there is a gang of people, and uh, they follow me. They attack my 100 Brickland shop, which was freehold. And uh, my nephew was uh, beaten, and uh, my, one of my cousins was badly injured. And uh, then there was a worker association, welfare association, there a vigilante group. Everybody was uh, stand against it, that if, if we are beaten, we will beat back. Altawali was going uh, to his home, walking from Brick Lane towards the post office. Uh, what, do you, what do you call the park? The Altawali, now Altawali Park. And uh, two youth uh, caught him and uh, put a uh, stab him on, on the neck and uh, he died on the spot. 
She was alone. Altaf Isak kenit bleya. Tara rock to pishach bornu badi. This is the corner, BNP, the BNP, the National Front, other fascist group and skinhead. They all came on Sunday morning selling their obnoxious newspaper and also shouting on black people, in particular on Bengali people, attacking them. They are wearing very threatening kind of clothes and insignia, fascist insignia and so on. So people in fact were so frightened to come this end on their own. Rather, people were coming in a group. I was attacked once, and uh, my, these two front teeth came out, really. I had, to be, I had to go to hospital for treatment. On another occasion, I was really punched on my eye. I was with another friend, of course, and they took that two of us couldn't do anything. We had to really find our way to a safety place. And these things, in fact, went. Uh, quite rampantly during the 70s, yeah? And in 78, I think it's reached its peak that when the Bengali youth came forward with sort of very vigor and force that we now stand together and face this fascist. This is also our country. This is, we have a, we make contribution to well-being of this country, this society, and we must pull back all the good things. Why should we only attack by the fascist and racist? Altaf Isak Kenneth Blea Tara Rock to Pishach Bornu Badir Hinnu Shikar Altaf Isak Kenneth Blea Tara Rock to Pishach Bornu Badir Hinnu Shikar Okay. Right. Coming down, what yes, okay, so we just passed now the notorious tunnel. It is the bridge between Bethan Green Road and Willard Street. And on many Sundays, hundreds of Bengali people were attacked here. Attacked are so nasty. People cannot, in fact, walk under the bridge during the dark hours on their own. So they have to really go with groups, with friends. And uh, I remember I walked uh, under the tunnel with a friend, and uh, we are chased by 20 to 25 skinheads. So we had to run, really. And uh, so many people were there during that time were attacks. Now it is changed, totally changed. There is no more attacks, no more attack during the dark hours or even at night. But previously, you walk during the daytime, you are uh, attacked, beaten, harassed, and so on. You came to study here? I came to study here, yes. So what happened to the studies? Well, study, as I said, I, st I studied about two and a half years, so 57, 58. At the end of 59, my study is finished, I mean. For some reason, I have to come finish it up. And then I went out for employment of my own, and I had a job at that time. And on my spare time, I used to do the community work. It was, uh, at that time, it was just after Second World War. It was a more or less rundown, rundown area and uh, social uh, system was on as, as, as it is at present time. So people have to find out their own ways and means to, for accommodation for, for other facilities. So there's a lot of difference between 20 years before and now. 40% or 45% population of Tower Hamlet are the Muslim communities. And out of that 40, 45%, uh, the about 80, uh, 70 to 80 percent people lives in Spitalville and St. Catherine's and Weaver's and St. Peter's. So we feel very deeply and very greatly that the religious uh, facilities for the Muslim children 
especially like the schools of Church of England, Church of England and, and Catholic, uh, Church of Catholics, they have their schools and the, uh, the primary schools, secondary schools in this area. Why not Muslim people have the same right and same privileges? There is no argument about it. And we are going to have it. That's one thing is certain. I can insist on that, that the authorities should make a note strongly about it, that Muslim people have, will have their right in this borough as the Roman Catholic people and the Church of England people enjoyed and have the privilege to have the rights as same way as we have. Well, what they, what they say is that if, if Muslims get their own schools, mm -hmm. they'll just produce these fanatics and fundamentalists. Well, it's not true. It's not true. It's the, the only, only, only religion in this world, I mean, one of the greatest religion in this world is the Muslim religion, which accommodates the all, all class of people. Whatever the religion is, we can accommodate them and we can give them teaching in the same way, better way, as they are having it on their own country. You've got children here and all that, and they will have their children. Uh, how do you see the future, you know, in terms of the Well, that we call say, a multiracial and multireligious society. I mean, as far as the uh, social side is concerned, we should say it's multiracial. But as far as religion is concerned, we say it's multireligious society. They think it, they do not think it that orthodox way. They never think of that way. They do think at the present time those boys and girls, those who are educated in Tower Hamlet and in English schools, they still feel they are purely 100% Muslims. Over the years, how have you seen the community change in terms of the problems it has faced or in terms of its development? Well, in terms of problems, because uh, the way we feel, the younger generation doesn't feel the same way. Younger generation feels they're born and brought up here, so they have the full right in this country according to the legislation and according to the laws as, as the boys and girls enjoying in this country. They feel that they are the part and parcel of the society, so they have to enjoy the same rights and same privileges as the boys and girls enjoying the same privileges and same rights in this country. of damage it's the preacher prime who's on a rampage raging all the time i get on stage get a mile a minute of rhyme a second time of the mind on the dotted line trying to find a master with a brain like me you ain't got it g i said a pace you never chase i rhyme and never leave a trace i play your way you never heard before and you never will basically more than a simple sample played on live this track's an example go with all you know i'll show you who's a pro let the chorus line blow So it's, it's very important to some of us, anyway, certainly around this area because we've got all our cousins and all that sort of thing. And I was born in this country, so I'm not sure what it's like back at home. I've been raised and brought up here, so I just know this side. So I'm a bit westernized sort of thing, but I still worry about my culture and all that sort of thing. 
And would you say that your culture, being a young sort of Bengali, would you say that was different to your parents? Yes, it is quite different because they're from the past and this is present. And again, it's a new generation. And this generation, so everything's just totally different. Before, you wouldn't see an Asian girl, Asian girl out on the streets before. They wouldn't, parents wouldn't let them go to school, but now it's just changed a bit as time went by. Gradually, everything's out there. You see Asian girls working in offices now and all that. I mean, I was born in Bangladesh, but I was brought up in this country. In a way, you can put it like this, we've got a different culture of our own. The new generation got a new culture. Which is it, what? Which consists of Bengali and the English culture put together. So we're not like, we haven't got an English culture, we haven't got a Bengali culture, we've got a culture of our own. Is that confusing or? It's confusing. It's confusing when you're explaining it to your parents when you do certain activities. But within ourselves, we know what we want. We know what we believe in. Mm. So in a way, within ourselves, it's alright. What's your religious belief? You know, are you into I'm that? I'm a Muslim. I believe in Islam. Right. Um, in what way? I mean... As an identity or as a religion? Both. But I'm not really, really into... really religious, because... According to my parents, that is, right? My, the culture I believe in, the way I go along, doesn't go along with their culture or the religion. But the way I see it, it does go along. I mean, a few of the things I do is wrong religion-wise, I know. But you can't help it. It's the way you grow up. Outside the house, that is. <laughs> I was a little bit of 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 জীবনের প্রথম পর্বে কোদার প্রত্যাশায় এই প্রথমবার বঞ্চনার শিকার একদিন পৃথিবী কাঁপানো উল্লাসে জন্ম যোদ্ধা হয়ে জন্মেছিল তোমার এই শ্রুতি মধুর বাংলা বর্ণমালার শেষ অক্ষরের কাছে আজ 17 বছর পেরিয়ে যৌবনে পদার্পণ করতেই তোমাকে করতে হলো আপন হারা প্রিয় হারা জন্ম হারা এমন কি তোমার ফেকামে ছড়ানো তোমার সবুজ প্রান্তরের দৃশ্য এবং ফেলে আসা আমার এক আদরণীয় পুনটাকেও আজ আমি খোদা পীড়িত বুবুক্ষু Jani ne ar kothe din tumar premier thorongo abar chhankar tulbe, ar a tumar ki pucha be tumar thorongi to premier mahuna hai. Shonghoti amra potek maashe dubar shoba kori potek maashe duro shoba kori, evang ekhane amra bivino dorne samaji. Sanskriti, Saitoni Sinta Kori, Ebong Saitovisha Kalutsana, Alutsana Kori. Antur Beduna Achka Nijiki Boro Bisho Priumonehai Attai Jun Mechidin Rapter Unishi to Nikrito Shuk Bedunai Bushiputo Shuri, Pingi Putte Tai Otto Chopoi Taruna Kore Hings Rohai and Aramoto Woodput. Jeno ami pithi be tabo dukho pithi aro uttop to balu kamo imuru bhumi phet kore chute chole chhi. Chiro akhangi to bani chupathi. Amar jibon er puri thi khire to iri huye chhe. Pithong shi to parbo to mala. Abong shi mar khai shomaj er utchi stock had dugoni kader shari shari michi. Kakhonu mane hai? Ei ami de jagote onno kono beshorat to khati de jonmo. Shotrishno ami aaj baro beshi opriyo. এই সমাজে কালের আলোচিত সাবিত্রীদের সভায় ধন্যবাদ ওলা ছড়া আছে কবিতা আছে সমাজে আছে রোমান্টিক আছে 
খুব খারাপ বলা যায় না নিশিরাতে হাসনা হেনার গন্ধে হাজার দুঃখের মাঝেও এনে দেয় এক অনাবিল শান্তি মুছে যায় ক্লান্তি স্নিগ্ধ সুবাসে মনের আবেশে হারিয়ে যায় তখন অজানা দেশে তবু শান্তি পাওয়া যায় অবশেষে আদার কেটে আসে আসে প্রাকৃতির লাবণ্যময় চেহারা নিয়ে কাছে কাছে ফুল ফুটে প্রজাপতি উড়ে আসে পাখি দিয়ে সুর শুনে সূর্যি মামা উঠে আসে very strange you know i was very sad you know leaving my country back there but now i'm getting used to it i went to my country last year to you know visit my grandparents so it's all right now yeah. you didn't go to school here did you yeah i went to school but after six months i came from i mean from my country though so that was very strange as well because the school was really big and I was, you know, small as well in, in a big place. And, but the majority of people in my school was, you know, Asian. So whatever my you know, teacher used to say, my friend used to, you know, explain it to me in Bengali. So I didn't have much trouble. But still, you know, I wasn't in that confident. But now, I'm, you know, I'm used to it and feel very confident. At the moment, I'm training in an office, I mean, under in a YTS scheme, and I'm working, I mean, training in an office in initial supplies, called initial supplies in Bethlehem Green. So I'd like to get a job in there, like, you know, a clinical worker. I'd like to work in an office. That's why I'm training in the office. When you're not working, what do you do? I mean, when you come home, do you, what, do you go well, out in the evening? No, I don't go out much, though. Well, in the weekend, yeah, sometimes I do. But not in the week, I mean, every day. No. When I come home, just, I just, you know, relax. And you know, sometimes I write poems and read Bengali poems. Write Bengali, I mean, read Bengali novels as well. So that's where, you know, that's the way I'm. My culture will be the same as my parents, but not exactly the same as my parents, because, you know, I'm in a different country. I'm going out and, you know, working. But when my mom, my mom was, you know, same as my age, she was brought, I mean, in a different country in Bangladesh. I don't mind leaving this country, though. But still, you know, I can't forget my, my country. There's no way, because, you know, I born there, and that's my motherland.
I was born in Bangladesh, Dhaka, but um, I was brought up in this country. I, I came here when I was about one and a half, two. Yeah, it's home. I mean, it's home for me. What's East End life? Um, I mean, I don't go to clubs and all that in the East End, but like this area is home. I, you know, I know it. I feel safe here. You know, this is my home. I've always lived here. And it's like nice to come back to East End, to the East End. Went to school just like ran up the road, um, primary and secondary, sort of both ran close by. Yeah, school was great. I mean, I went to my secondary school, um, uh, it was like predominantly Bengali, all girls' school. Um, but it was a good school. Um, I didn't come across any problems, you know. Um, I enjoyed it there. And did you get the qualifications you'd need? Yeah, well, I got all my, I got my GCSEs, but for like, you know, they're the ones to take me sort of into the future, I don't know yet, because it's still really quite hard to decide what you want to do. You know, as, I don't know, 18, I can't really decide even yet, like, you know, what do I want to do for the rest of my life? It's quite hard, so I'm just doing what I'm enjoying right now, which is like music and working with children, you know. <laughs> How can this be? You don't see that times are getting rougher. My people are starving and dying in the gutter. Now we have to act and find a better way. Strive to survive for a brighter day. Cause it's how the living is beyond our means. Oh, Bangladesh boy, we're wishing on a dream. I was involved in the League of Joy Bangla, which is a youth organization. And people who were in that youth organisation actually wanted to form a band. So we actually formed a band from that, you know, from the youth organisation. Um, and that's why, you know, I, I knew these people and we shared the same sort of ideas. And that's why I felt that, yeah, I can join this band because, you know, my ideas are, um, fit theirs and their ideas fit mine, you know. So we're at, we're at one with each other in the band. I don't know, I mean, what people mean when they say traditional, but like, for me, like, uh, uh, depends often maybe just what I'm wearing will immediately give someone an impression of like you know what sort of person I am um, but it's when I speak usually people sort of uh, you know when I talk rapidly in Cockney like you know they sort of can't believe it they think right we should probably can't speak Bengali which is like wrong really but yeah it's probably what I wear the way I talk you know that all sort of um, but I've, yeah I, I wouldn't say that you know uh, yeah, I mean, maybe I'm allowed to go out more. Uh, I'm allowed to go out, I'm allowed to do loads of things. All right, Asian girls, they're not allowed to go out this much or that much, whatever, you know, which is like, why not? Well, you know what I mean? Our parents are worried for us, you know what I mean? Like, my mum and dad don't want me to be going out in the streets and I'll be attacked because of my colour or whatever, which does happen around here, you know. But, um, you know, if I was to be go abroad or something, and people would say, where are you from? Well, I'd say, yeah, I'm British, whatever. But then they'd want to know what my race is, and I'd say, yeah, I'm Bengali. You know, I'm not English. I am Bengali. You know, I'm from Bangladesh. I was born there. But you know, all right, I am a British Bengali. That's how I see myself. I was brought up uh, and uh, I studied in Sylhet um, and I like Sylhet. I, I do treat this as my motherland. Uh, I came in this country in 1984. I came here as a student um, for higher studies in medicine. I was qualified as a medical doctor in Bangladesh. So I came here for higher studies in medicine and I completed that. Then I settled here with my family, with my wife. I was supposed to be uh, a GP in this country, which I couldn't become because of the system in this country. Um, General Medical C Council, they don't recognize the qualification. Uh, they actually don't recognize the university where I was qualified from. It is the Chittagong University. 
My job title is Senior Health Promotion Officer. I'm involved uh, particularly with AIDS program. I'm one of those who uh, provide information and education for the local community. Uh, just to inform people how people can protect themselves from this serious illness. As you know, AIDS is a very serious illness. It's becoming um, a growing problem for all, uh, all over the world at the moment. So you're actually not working as a doctor? No, I'm not. Doesn't that bother you? Well, sometimes I really uh, feel that uh, I got skills, I, I got knowledge. I'm working with doctors, but I can't really, really treat people here. I can't give treatment to people uh, because of that system, the General Medical Council's regulation. Uh, but again, yeah, it gives me some pain sometime. I was qualified there. I was experienced for five years. Still, I got two postgraduate uh, postgraduate degrees from this country. Still, I was not allowed to become a doctor. So there are a lot of people like me. There are a lot of people like me. And I believe that music is something which gives people to forget their uh, sadness, unhappiness. This is a very good way of uh, knowing each other.